Joining us now for more, Andy Lipow, president of Lipow Oil Associates. Was that a big surprise that the the Iran, Iranian negotiator tweeted that the deal is closer than ever? And, and what could that mean for oil prices, Andy? Well, I think the market has been waiting for over a year to see some progress on the negotiation fronts. And now that we do have a headline, the market is reacting. I think that if we were to get Iranian oil to return to the market, first they have a lot of inventory that could hit the market immediately. And then we could see their production increase, which would hit the market eventually. But in the near term, a return to uh, the market would mean a, a fall of 3 to $5 a barrel in the oil price. So we're seeing it down about two bucks, a little less than that today. So I, it's, it's hard to make sense of all the, the moving geopolitical parts. So I'll just ask you, as far as the market concerned, which, which is the more powerful force over the next few weeks? Is it what happens in Russia and Ukraine? What happens with Iran? Just demand coming out of COVID? What's going to take prices one way or the other? Well, I think taking precedent is really what's happening between Russia, the United States, and the Ukraine. I mean, we talk about the natural gas business in Europe and how much that Russia supplies about 35 percent of European imports, but they also supply about 25 percent of European crude oil and oil product imports, which is three million barrels a day. And some of the countries that can be most affected are the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Hungary from the crude oil pipelines that transit through the Ukraine. So I think the geopolitical issues are front and center. And behind that, we're going to be worried about supply concerns and how much more OPEC Plus can actually produce as world oil demand recovers. Well, how do you um, sort of balance that out? I mean, if you were to assume that all that supply out of Russia is cut off and is gone, let's just say, uh, can OPEC plus offset that entirely? I don't think so, because it's, it's too much oil. I think we would see the release of strategic stocks in order to get, you know, Europe and the rest of the world through for another couple of months. But we do hear from OPEC plus that the only two countries that can really substantially increase production are Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. And their production capacity would really be tested if we lost Russian supply to Europe. So what are you forecasting for oil in the, immediate, in, in the immediate term, Andy? So in the immediate term, I think we're stuck in this 90 to $95 a barrel range, depending on what happens between Russia, the United States, and Ukraine. If tensions simmer down, then certainly we can see a fall in prices of 5 to $7 a barrel, perhaps even a bit more, because the market will breathe a sigh of relief that supplies will not be disrupted, and that's really front and center. So the, I mean, what's the upside risk if, so, if you, if well, you up, expect this to all get worse? Well, if things get worse, clearly $100 a barrel will be right in the cards, especially as soon as Russia would invade Ukraine. And then a supply disruption means that we could really see $120 a barrel oil as prices would just simply spike in order to get a reaction from the demand side to just cut use.